What's up out there in YouTube land? This is Handy Saves Money with another money saving video for you. Today we have a Samsung LN46A630 LCD TV. And if you're like me and have a bad power supply, I'm going to explain to you how to fix that power supply for much cheaper than you can buy the board for. Um, so first things first, you're going to need a magnetic screwdriver. And I know you're probably saying, well, Handy, I don't have a magnetic screwdriver. Well, here's a little hint for you. If you have a semi-powerful magnet laying around your house, if you take that magnet and just drag it along the screwdriver like this a couple of times, it's going to magnetize your screwdriver long enough for you to at least get done what you need to get done here. So if you don't have a magnetic screwdriver, you can make one real fast. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the stand, which you can see on this TV, there are four screws at the bottom. And they are marked with an S. And see our little magnet pulls our screws right out. Just like that. And you will need a longer screwdriver for this because uh, these channels in the bottom are kind of deep. So um, make sure you have a screwdriver that's long enough. Last one might give you a little bit of headache if you just jiggle it around a little bit maybe a hold up on it it will come out all right so now we got our stand those are four screws you can go ahead and put them aside now make sure that you not only pull these vase mount screws here these four but also in the control panel here in the uh, input panel there are two screws one two do not forget about these guys or you will be trying to pull your cover off your TV wondering why uh, it's still grabbing and once you get those out you can just Work your way around the outside of the TV. to use a screw gun uh, I just didn't grab mine um, but if you are going to use it make sure you have your clutch set low so that when you do go to put it back together you don't uh, strip all your screws off the back of the television your two screws in the panel. Now once you've gone all the way around, you can simply lift off the back cover and set that up somewhere against the wall. Okay, so now we got the inside of our TV. You can see here go back back up so you can see the whole thing there you can see left side and right side these are the uh in this case these are, these are ccfl lighting tubes and the, and the light uh, controllers running around here you see we have the main board the tuner and this is the power supply and so they say well your power supply is bad well if you know anything about electronics um, you know the capacitors are used to filter electricity and store electricity. So if you look right here, you can see we have these six large capacitors here. These two are, are bulging out and what that means 
is that the electrolyte is about used up and these capacitors are going to burst if they're left too long. And these are just, uh, this kind of thing happens as a function of the quality of the capacitors and uh, age and use. So um, it's possible that these two capacitors here were, you know, utilized more by the system than these two. And so they're starting to bulge. So um, what we're going to do is if you look over here, I got my trusty soldering iron. I have some rosin core solder. I have a desoldering tool and we have our replacement capacitors. Um, these are 1000 microfarad 16 volt capacitors. Um, now if you're not careful you'll pay 50 cents a piece for them at five dollars shipping. I actually got this package of 50 on Amazon for five dollars and fifty cents with free shipping. So as you can see I could probably fix a whole lot of TVs. So if you need some let me know. I'll mail you some. So let me uh, get my uh, soldering station set up here and um, I'll get right back to you. I'm not going to set up a soldering station. Okay, so we're going to take this board out. So first let's work our way around with our connectors. You know, these have a little squeeze tab on them here. So you squeeze the tab and just work it back and forth, pull straight out. Same with these guys, squeeze the tab, work it back and forth and pull straight out. These big guys. Try not to stress any of the components on the board, push on things. You know, you want to be as gentle as possible. Um, down here, this is the power. This is a little green guy's the ground, just twist and pull a little bit. And then our lighting connectors down here at the very bottom. And you can see that the board is flexing a little bit. That's okay. Um, there we go. So we can see all of our connectors are disconnected. So you can work your way around the outside. You see the screws and they have these little grounding tabs attached to them that's, that's going to be attached to the board. So we're going to just work our way around the board. They're a little short guys. Doesn't take a whole lot of uh, oomph to get them out. see any screws in the center so let's uh, carefully pick up our board here we are you can see a little bit of dirt otherwise it looks about normal now we have these two here and since we're in here we're going to um, replace these two next to it because they are the uh, same um, so these two that are bad and these two next to it, um, they're all the same uh, type, they're all the same uh, capacitance and voltage. So if, if these two are going bad, these two are probably right behind it. Um, so if you see, we can see here, this is a heat sink for these two uh, voltage regulators right here. So we're going to turn it over and you can see, you know, if you flip it back and forth, one, two, three, four, and then we can see here, one, two, three, four. Here's our four capacitors. And they're actually marked uh, CM851, CM852, CM854, and CM855. So these are our capacitors on the back side. So let me get my soldering station set up and then we'll work on uh, getting these old ones out and getting the new ones in. All right, here we are back again. I've got my soldering iron warmed up. I've got my desoldering tool. Uh, if you don't have a desoldering tool, you can do it without it. All a desoldering tool is, is uh, you click it down here and when you heat up your solder, you hit the button and it sucks it out and it makes things easier to deal with. Um, but like I said, you can do it without it. It's just going to be a little trickier. So, we have our new capacitors here. You can see that they are smaller than our old ones. Uh, that can be attributed to advancements in technology and manufacturing techniques, etc. Uh, very, very important point though, you'll see that one leg is long and one leg is short. Your short leg is your cathode, that's your negative, and your long leg is your anode, that's your positive. And if you look on here, on the back of the board, I don't know if you can see it or not, but 
these legs here are marked with a little plus, so they're going to be positive. So the long leg is going to come through next to the positive when we take these apart. So the way that I like to take these out is I will have my desoldering tool here. I have my soldering iron. I will uh, go ahead and clean it off a little bit. And so what I will do is I will hold on to the capacitor that I'm going to take out first with my fingers. And that's going to be this guy up here. Well, actually, I can't hold it yet. Let's see if we can get some of the solder out. So we're going to start with the hot side here. Just touch your soldering iron to it. And give her a minute. Okay, it's hot. <laughs> Taking an awfully long time here. All right, so we're just gonna. There we go. We're starting to get a little bit of liquid there. Not, not hot enough yet. Hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Well, let's try the other side. How about that? Okay, that one liquefied real fast. So you can see it's liquid. Gonna get our desoldering tool. Point, and it's gonna pull some of the solder out. And we'll see if we can't get this other one. This other one's being finicky. I don't know if we're gonna get anything out of there. All right, so I'm gonna grab hold of the capacitor that I'm trying to take out and just warm it up, warm it over side up you're gonna start with. Then once your solder starts to melt, it'll move around. You'll be able to, you'll see it start to move around some. She's starting to work loose and then you can pull it right out and you can see the bottom is bulged too. I don't know how well you can see um, but this plastic cap on the bottom is, is a bit rounded as well so um, yeah these things are definitely at the end of their life. So we got the first one out and you can stick your soldering iron in the hole a little bit just to uh, make sure the solder is round so you have a nice hole to uh, stick your next one through. So, and we're going to rep repeat this procedure four times. Um, I will spare you standing here and watching me do it just because it's not terribly interesting. But just work your way down the line and we're going to take all four capacitors out in the same manner and then I will pick you up when we're ready to start putting them back in. So remember our positive is the uh, longer leg. That's our anode. So you're just going to, in this case, the anode is toward this heat sink. So you're just going to put it in the hole like so. You want to, you know, get it down. We'll leave a little bit of air space. And then on these, we're just going to bend these out like so. That's going to hold it in place. And so we'll go ahead and repeat three times. our one two three four new capacitors here so we can bend those out just a bit so now we take our soldering iron and we have rosin core solder it's very important that you use rosin core solder because that will uh, ensure that everything is nice and clean and uh, have good contact so when you're soldering I mean, you probably already know this but you want to heat the work not the solder so heat your work and then touch your solder to your work. There we go. Make 
sure your solder flows into the board a little bit and you'll see it's got a, it'll have a nice smooth surface when it'll just kind of pull in there solder. Uh, you get a small pair of uh, wire cutters. Wire cutters. Good pair of wire cutters, please. Uh, a small pair of side cutters and what we're going to do is we're just going to cut off our tails here. Capacitors, that joint doesn't look very nice to me. So we will uh, come back in here, warm them back up again. A little, a little more solder in there. And there we go. Alrighty then. <laughs> What's so funny? Alrighty then, Jim Carrey. Alright, so we got our tails trimmed, and we can see. I'll straighten these guys out here a little bit. All in all, not a bad job. So now, we'll go put the board back in. in here the way we came out make sure we get our connectors out from under it and we'll line up all our screw holes and replace our screws remember don't uh, you don't want to go too tight on these they're just little sheet metal screws
here. And back together the same way it came apart. side is going to go down. Let me just go ahead and... Or am I wrong? No, the angled side is going to go up. My fault. And we're going to slide it right in there. We're going to replace our four stand screws. And you have successfully replaced the capacitors in your power supply. And it saved you from what is potentially a $500 repair bill from the TV repairman. And if you don't have any experience soldering, practice a little bit before you do it if you have to. Uh, it's always good. I'm sure you can find lots of good videos out there uh, to help you. You don't need any fancy, expensive soldering iron. Although nicer irons are better. But you do with what you got. 
So, once again, this was Handy Save Money, and I'm saving you money by helping you fix your TV power supply. Y'all be safe out there in YouTube land.